welcome back in this video i will explain the concept of principal component analysis with the help of simple solid example previously i have solved two examples link for those videos are given in the description below for the given data we need to compute the principal component vectors and the first principal components in the first step of principal component analysis we need to find the mean that is mean of x and mean of y mean of x each is equal to sum of all the values of x divided by number of examples that is 2 plus 3 plus 7 divided by number of examples that is 3 so which is equal to 4 similarly we will find the mean of y which is equal to 17 next we need to calculate the mean center of the data that can be calculated by subtracting the mean by individual values that is 2 minus 4 3 minus 4, 7 minus 4 and uh, 11 minus 17, 14 minus 17, 26 minus 17. Once you subtract this one, we will get the x centered as minus 2, minus 1, 3, minus 6, minus 3, 9. After that, we need to compute the covariance matrix. To find the covariance matrix, we detect the centered matrix as a z. So, we need to calculate the z transpose that is here the columns are represented in row form. So, once you find the z transpose, next we need to find the covariance matrix by following equation that is covariance of z which is equal to 1 divided by n minus 1 into z into z transpose. Here n is nothing but the number of examples. The number of examples are 3. So, 3 minus 1 which is equal to 2. So, it will become 1 divided by 2. Next, we need to do the matrix multiplication with Z and Z transpose. First, we will multiply first row with the first column. That is minus 2 into minus 2. That is minus 2 square plus minus 1 into minus 1. That is minus 1 square plus 3 into 3. That is 3 square. Next, we will do the first row with the second column. That is minus 2 into minus 6 plus minus 1 into minus 3 plus 3 into 9. Similarly, we will multiply the second row with the first column and second row with the second column. So, once you simplify this one, we will get the covariance of z which is equal to 7, 21, 21 and 63. So, once you find the covariance matrix, next we need to find the eigenvalues. To find the eigenvalues, we need to solve the characteristic equation that is determinant of covariance of z minus lambda into i which is equal to 0. Here i is nothing but an identity matrix. In this uh, uh, diagonal values are 1 and remaining values are 0. So that identity matrix is multiplied with lambda. Then this value or this matrix will become lambda 0 and uh, 0 lambda. Here we know the covariance of z that is this matrix minus lambda into i. So what we will get? Uh, 7 minus lambda and uh, 21 minus 0 that is 0 and 21 minus 0 that is 0 and uh, 63 minus lambda that is 63 minus lambda. Next we need to find the determinant of this matrix. The determinant can be calculated by multiplying third the determinant. Next we need to next we need to find the determinant of this matrix. The determinant can be find by multiplying the diagonal values minus multiplying of opposite diagonal values that is 7 minus lambda into 63 minus lambda minus 21 into 21 that is 21 square which is equal to 0. Here we need to multiply these two brackets that is 7 into 63 minus 7 into minus lambda minus uh, lambda into 63 and uh, minus into minus that is plus lambda square minus 21 square that is 441 which is equal to 0. So, once you solve this equation, we will get two lambda values that is lambda 1 which is equal to 70 and lambda 2 is equal to 0. This is the first eigen value and this is the second eigen value. Once you compute the eigen values, next we need to compute the eigen vectors and normalized eigen vectors. To find the eigen vectors, we need to use the eigen values. First, I will use the eigen values that is lambda which is equal to 70. So, here we use the following formula to find the eigen vector that is covariance of z minus 70 i into v1. v1 is nothing but the first eigen vector that is represented as x and y. So, i is identity matrix which is multiplied with 70. So, in the diagonal we get the 70 
and the remaining values are 0. Covariance of Z minus 70i. So, uh, 7 minus 70 that is minus 26. 21 minus 0 that is 21. 21 minus 0 that is 21. 63 minus 70 that is minus 7. And V1 is represented as X and Y. Here we will multiply first row with first column. We will get minus 63 X plus 21 Y which is equal to 0. Here we will consider x which is equal to 0, then we will get y is equal to 0. This is the first eigenvector that is v1 is equal to 1 and 3. Next we need to find the normalized eigenvector that is normalized eigenvector that is v cap which is equal to eigenvector divided by length of eigenvector. Length of eigenvector is nothing but square root of sum of square of individual values. So, first normalized eigenvector that is V1 cap which is equal to 1 divided by square root of 10, 1 and 3. Next, we need to find the second eigenvector by considering lambda is equal to 0 by using this formula that is covariance of Z minus uh, 0 into I into V2 that is uh, V2 is nothing but the second eigenvector which is represented as x and y and this will become 0. So, we here we will get the covariance of z which is equal to 0. So, that will become a 7, 21, 21, 63. This will multiply with v2 that is x and y which is equal to 0. Here we need to multiply first row with first column that is 7 x plus 21 y which is equal to 0. Here we will assume y value as 1 then we will get x is equal to minus 3. So, this is a second eigenvector. Next, we need to find the second normalized eigenvector that is eigenvector divided by length of eigenvector. So, we will get the second normalized eigenvector that is V2 cap which is equal to 1 divided by root of 10 minus 3 and 1. So, after finding the eigenvectors and normalized eigenvectors, next we need to find the principal component vectors. So, first principal component that is U1 is nothing but the first normalized eigenvector that is 1 divided by root of 10. 1 and 3. Second principal component that is u2 which is equal to second normalized eigenvector that is 1 divided by square root of 10 minus 3 and 1. Next we need to project mean center data on first principal component that can be done by dot product of z and u1. So, here we know the z matrix and we know the u1 that is nor first normalized eigenvectors. So, once you do the dot operation on these two matrices, we will get z dot u1 as 1 divided by square root of 10 minus 20 minus 10 and 30. Next, we need to plot the graph by considering the original data. Here, x is 2, y is 11. So, we will get in this point. And next is x is 3, y is 14. So, x is 3 and y is 14, we will get here. And next one is 7, 26. So, 7 is somewhere here and y is 26 that will be here and which is noted here. Next we need to plot by considering the mean center data. So, here the mean center data x value is minus 2, y value is minus 6, minus 2 is here and minus 6 is here. So, we will get the point in this point. Next is minus 1, minus 3. So, minus 3 is somewhere here and uh, minus 3. 1 is here and minus 3 is somewhere here. So, we will get the point here. Next one is 3 and 9. Uh, 3 is somewhere here and 9 is here. So, we will get the point in this point. Next, we need to plot the principal component axis. First, we will consider U1 matrix uh, that is the first normalized eigenvectors. So, here the x value is 0.32 and y is 0.94. So, 0.32 is somewhere here and uh, 0.94 is somewhere in this point. So, we will get this point. So, from this we need to draw the line which is passing through the origin. So, in this case this red color line is a first principal component. Next, we need to consider U2 that is second normalized eigenvector. In this x value is minus 9, x value is minus 0.94 and y is 0.32. So, minus 0.94 is somewhere here and uh, point 0.3 is somewhere here. So, we will get the point in this point. So, we need to plot the line which is passing through origin. In this case, orange line is indicated as a second principal component. This is how we can calculate the principal component vectors and the first principal component. I hope the concept of principal component analysis is clear. 
If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.